It's Wednesday night. Yeah, so I've got a little Yellowstone shirt on here. It seems to have been a popular destination this summer for some of you. We've got folks that have traveled and vacation, and I think everyone is settling back down because it is back to school time. I know it was fun here today. Kind of the streets were just silent this morning. Everyone, after everyone scurried around and got kids into classrooms and schools, and the first day of school is over here. I know it's also been in other places. Quincy's been busy. There's but other places around the basin that have started a week ago. Some that started today, some that started Monday, some that will start after Labor Day. So that's kind of, this is that whole general back to school time anyway. And so it's a, uh, it always is a little bittersweet for me. I miss the classroom. I miss scurrying around, getting ready to, to go uh, back into a classroom with kids. But you know, I've replaced those kids with a bunch of seniors on Wednesday morning. So that works out great for me. I still get my teacher fix. That's been a a lot of fun. Uh, weather, weather is crazy. That's all I can say. This morning, it was a sprinkling and it was uh, raining. Then I waited for it to settle down. I thought, okay, great. I can still get out, get Lucy, a walk in with Lucy. And I'd head out this morning and do it before the rain comes. I got just about to the end of our block and headed over towards the park and it starts plop, 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 plop. And I decided to make a run for the mailbox, ran over, got the mail, ran back across the street. Poor Lucy. Her little legs, remember? Chihuahua-sized legs. So she was just like, dit, 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 And I go, come on, come on, hurry up. Because it's raining harder and harder and harder as I got just about a third of the way up towards our house. And then it started raining even harder. And I was running and ducking under a few trees and running and just kind of, not that it's going to, okay, let's be honest. I wasn't running. I was just kind of walking very briskly, but Lucy was pretty much in a dead run to keep up with me as I briskly walked my way back, knowing that I am not made of sugar. I will not melt. So we got home, but I was just um, a little worse for wear with, uh, with the uh, raindrops on, shook it off. We settled ourselves down and then I headed off to Bible study this morning. In case you've been wondering, some of you I know, this is Quincy First Assembly, and you can watch online with me, but I also have under Kathy Jingling YouTube, we also have uh, Wednesday Morning Bible Study here in Moses Lake with a lot of senior citizens, and so some of you have jumped on. We've gone through uh, the Book of Revelation. We went through First and Second Kings. Uh, those are all online. They're all under, under that account, and we have just started the book of John, the Gospel of John. And we were, we're, we're plowing our way through the book of John. It's so incredibly packed full of information and teaching for us. So I'm enjoying doing that. And like I said, it takes care of my teacher fix. So uh, every Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock from 10 to 11, you can watch it live streamed or just Kathy Jingling. Or you can uh, watch it as a YouTube as well. So we're enjoy I'm enjoying that. And that's... Uh, where I get to have a lot of fun with my new group of kids this year. Okay, so most of them, they're all, all pretty much over 60. So uh, those kids are a lot of fun and we have a great time. So this evening, wow, good to see you, Pam. The Realmies have jumped in. Helen, of course, is online. Good for you, Helen. I just, you just encourage my heart when you jump on all the time. And she's always got a good word to say, so she's always encouraging me. Uh, as well as getting uh, the teaching that we're doing. I've got something we're going to talk about tonight, and I'm really hoping, well, no, you know what? I'm going to trust that those who need to hear it will be online. And those who need to hear it later, especially, will get on later and hear it, because uh, once you hear the topic, you'll know why it's so important for some. So I think it's good for all of us. It's something in Scripture from God's Word, so we're going to be talking about that in just a minute. Tonight, uh, let's just open with a word of prayer. It's 645. It's time to get started. So let's pray, and I'm sure a few others may slide in with us as well. So, Father, we give you thanks for another great day just to see your love in action, to see you with your grace uh, lavished upon people. Uh, I watch you today just do some mighty things in people's lives and hearts. Father, I, I ask you to be with those who need comfort, those who are struggling, those who are at a time of loss and mourning, 
those who have sickness or some other issue that they need help with, that you would just encourage them tonight, that you would ch uh, challenge them to grow their faith and increase their trust in you, that you've got this. You've got this life for us and with us, and we're never going to be alone. You're always walking through us, e through it with us, even the difficult things and the hard things. So we're thankful for that tonight. So thank you and help us capture that in our hearts, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, this evening, I want to talk to you a little bit about a four-letter word. Now, I know when we were kids, it was like, oh, a four-letter word was always bad, always bad words. And you had to be careful not to be um, hearing or using four-letter words. And uh, that was never even a really much of a possibility in our in our house we just didn't have four letter words going around but tonight I'm going to talk to you about one that's really important that we all do need to know and we need to make sure we're dealing with this word and the word is spelled R E S T rest rest you know uh, I asked Joyce to bring out her bring out her pillow you know even when she travels, she has to take her favorite pillow with her. Any of you do that? When you travel or go on vacation, you have to take your favorite pillow because she just don't get as good a rest with something else. She loves her favorite pillow. She, uh, she gets a lot of rest. Joyce, Joyce loves to sleep. She has the gift of sleep, I tell her. You know, there's that gifting thing. Well, Joyce has a gift of sleep, and she just loves to sleep and enjoys that and enjoys resting and napping and doing some of those things. So um, that's what's, what's interesting for me is watching people and see how well they rest. So uh, how many of you are nappers? You take naps. I used to work with a gal and she could take exactly, she would lay down and she knew exactly 20 minutes. Not less, not more. Exactly 20 minutes. She would lay down, zonk, clear out, take a 20-minute nap, jump up and go, okay, I'm ready. Just like that. And it would just freak me out. She could rest and jump up. <sighs> I'm not, not, not such a good one at resting. It looks like, Helen, you, you kind of struggle with getting rest in. Sometimes some of us don't get to rest that easily to wind down. And some of us are afraid if we wind down, we won't wind back up. Oh, good. Georgia's a napper. Uh, yes, even David says Georgia has the gift of napping. She is good at napping. Okay. Well, some of you, and I'm sure others that are watching, will respond a little bit more about that. But tonight, we talk about that favorite pillow. We talk about rest. The Bible speaks to us very strongly and very clearly about spiritual rest. Now, there's physical rest, and you have to have it. You know, you have to be able to sleep well, or it affects every part of your body. Um, not sleeping well can affect your performance throughout the rest of the day, your cognitive skills, how well you can think, and how well you can figure things out. Your sleep in, affects your diet and how your body digests your food. There's all kinds of things that happen in your body as you sleep well. Those people who don't sleep well begin to struggle. Those people who can't sleep hardly at all begin to have issues with mental capacity. They begin to have issues with their emotions. They begin to have, they get cranky, okay? They just get cranky. Or they also get so they can't make sense of things. Uh, there's been symptoms that mimic even like, like um, Alzheimer's type symptoms and it's because of lack of sleep. Lack of sleep affects our body in many ways. Lack of rest in the Lord, spiritual rest, deeply begins to affect our spiritual life. Same ideas. Physical rest needed for a healthy body. Spiritual rest is needed for a healthy spiritual body. And so we have to look at those things. And you wonder where I got that one. Joyce is going to put it on, but we have a scripture verse tonight. Matthew eleven twenty eight, Matthew eleven twenty eight. Jesus began to speak to them, and he saw that people were just struggling. People were having issues with, with trying to 
handle the political situation like Rome was being so horrific and the early the time of when Jesus was walking on the earth, the people were feeling oppressed and overtaxed. They didn't like the way the people were ruling over them. They didn't like the taxation. They didn't like, oh, kind of sounds like 2023. Okay, so they had all this political unrest and all these issues. They were stressed about the economy and their finances because they kept being overtaxed. They didn't have enough money to do well. Uh, they were They were upset and worried about all these false religions around them that kept pushing in on their belief system. And so even right amongst them, even amongst families, there were unbelievers or people who worshiped other idols and all of that began to weigh on people. And you know what? They were stressed out. Now they didn't use that term. That's a new one for us. I mean, we, we kind of know what it means to be stressed out. They were stressed out. And Jesus watched the crowds and he began to notice this. And then, be careful, it wasn't just about bad stuff. Some people were getting totally stressed out about the good things. Oh, some of them were so worried that they could not live a life that was good enough to please God. Some people were worrying that they weren't just doing enough uh, to, to, to make uh, Jesus proud of them. Some people were worried that, that they wouldn't know how to how to reach the whole world with this message of the gospel. Some people, they were, they were even worried about doing the right things. Stressed, stressed, stress and worry. They were worried, how can we reach the multitudes? How can we feed crowds of people? How can we, you see, it was constantly coming up and there was stress. Um, so if you think 2023, you're like, oh, this is so much worse than Bible times. No, not really stresses they may be different stresses but they're still stresses and jesus knew that the people needed rest okay so take a deep breath and as i read matthew eleven twenty eight, jesus spoke to the crowds here are these stressed out people and he says come to me okay just the first phrase come to me don't run to the government officials. Don't run to the neighbors. Don't run to all kinds of people who maybe have enough money to help you out. Don't run to the economy. Don't run to the um, educators and philosophers of your day. Don't run to false gods. Come to me. That's the start. Jesus looked at stressed out people and said, come to me. When we get stressed, what should we do? Turn to God. Turn to him and hear him saying, come to me. And it says, all you who are weary and burdened. Okay, weary means just flat out tired. Weird can also mean worried. It's very closely tied. It means so tired and so worried that your worry makes you tired. You become fearful. You become doubtful. Those are the things that can cause us to become so weary and burdened you see he didn't make us so that we would solve all the problems of the world he didn't make us to be in charge of everything he's the one in charge he's the one in control he's the creator god the miraculous miracle working god that will take care of us so he says come to me all you who are weary and burdened and i will give you more brain smartness so you can figure it out. No. I will give you riches so you can pay to work it out. No. I will put you in political high positions so you can be in charge. No. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. It's amazing. The God who created us knows what we need the most and that's rest both physically and spiritually none of us were created to run 100 miles an hour 100 days in a row he made us to work in that system of six days do the best we can even within sometimes we're saying within one day you can only do so many hours and so much and then what go to him Go to him and he'll give you the rest you need. 
I, I love the fact that there are times he calls us aside and says, find a place to become quiet. Just be with me. There's wonderful times we get away for vacations. But you know, sometimes getting away and going off somewhere, we come back and it seems like the workload is higher and it's worse and it's heavier and we have to, we get stressed out coming back from our rest times. He says, no, 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 no. It's not about how much time and it's not about how far away you can go. It's about coming to me, Jesus said. You see, that's it. In the middle of crazy schedule you just simply turn around and come to Jesus and say in the middle of this craziness right now I need you to give me some rest in the middle of this weird situation I don't have answers for it I don't know what to do and I don't know how to turn I don't know how I'm going to finish this and I don't know <gasps> he says come to me and then he says He'll give us rest. I love that. And tonight, somebody needed to be reminded of that. Some of you have made comments that there are times you struggle with just getting stressed out. Most of the time, most of the time, it's because it's not going our way. Most of the time, because the timing isn't our timing. And we have to trust God's timing. And most of the time, it's because we can't figure it out, but we have to trust in a God who can. So in our life of trusting him, of our growing faith in him, more and more we find that <gasps> we slow down and have to say, God, I really don't know what to do here, but I can come to you and you'll give me rest in this. You'll give me spiritual rest. Now, there are times we get exhausted. I know there are some days where we work super hard and you can't even hardly walk to bed. You're just flat out worn out and tired. We know we have to get in bed and rest. You don't just change your clothes and go on and start the next work day. You have to rest. And he's saying if we understand that about our physical body, we need to also understand that about our spiritual body. Our spirit needs rest. Sundays, sometimes I can have a zillion things going on in my mind, but as soon as I pray with all of us together, usually at the beginning of a service and say, let's just join our worship team. <sighs> I watch and almost collectively, you can see everybody start to, start to sing and start to worship and something begins to happen. We come to him to worship and when we come to him, he gives us rest. Now, I'm not watching any of you to, I'm not telling you to bring a pillow and take a little nap in church. Please don't. Well, some of you do already anyway, as far as napping, but I'm just saying, find rest. Find that spiritual rest. He restores he recovers us. He refreshes us. He gives us rest. All the things that we need physically out of rest, he can give to us spiritually. And we stop thrashing. Uh, I'm a thrasher from way back. You know, people that thrash around and just uh, try to get it done. And there's many, many times when I'll feel that tap on my shoulder, that nudge in my heart. And he's saying, would you just come to me because you're pretty weary you're pretty burdened over this. Just come to me and I'll give you rest. I don't get an instant answer always. I don't have everything fall into place perfectly. I don't have the work that has to be done done. But all of a sudden my heart is different. My thought process is on him. My heart is refreshed in him. I do it with more joy. I do it with a sense of peace, not panic. And it changes the outcome of everything. Maybe it's just me that needed to hear this again tonight. But I think we all need to be reminded now and then to come to him. Let me read that again. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. What did Jesus say to the stressed out people? Come to me. And you who are weary and burdened. 
and I will give you rest. Father, thank you for the rest, especially not only, we thank you when you help us sleep at night. We thank you when you help us nap when we need to. We thank you for physical rest, but tonight we're just again so thankful for spiritual rest that we can come to you in both physical needs and with our spiritual needs. And as we come with those kind of burdens, you give us rest. You help us put them in your hands and trust you. Have our faith grow in you and find the rest we need in our soul. Father, we're thankful that one day we'll be with you in heaven. And in that place, it'll be a place of constant rest. There'll be no more burdens, no more weariness, no more complete rest. That'll shock some of us in our systems. How wonderful to even think about that. But Father, you're telling us now through your son to come and you'll give us rest here and now. Even in that moment when we need it most, you'll give us rest. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I'm hoping some of our other folks... I'm really kind of hoping some of our overworked, totally stressed out people will jump in and at least watch us online so that they can re be reminded of the rest they need to have. So enjoy your sense of rest tonight. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Just enjoying God's presence in your hearts. I'm thankful for that. And I'll see you Sunday morning. Sunday morning, 10 o'clock for the kids and the youth. I'm excited about what they're studying. They're starting to work their way through the books of the Bible. We're going to be talking more about that. And then 10.30 is service for the rest of us. So come have some coffee and chat while the kids and youth are in their classes. And we'll get started in the morning service. I can't wait. I just can't wait. Again, it's exciting and it's refreshing to be in God's Word. Have a good evening.